peace. It's great to see you again. Today we're going to learn about the Underground Railroad, which is a very important part of American history. The first thing you're going to learn is that the Underground Railroad wasn't underground, neither was it a railroad. But before we discuss that, it's important to understand why there was an Underground Railroad. When the first enslaved Africans set foot on the shores of North America, there were always those who sought freedom through insurrections, revolts, and escapes. Those who sought to escape developed a secret, sophisticated network of people, places, and routes from the South to the North. This secret network came to be known as the Underground Railroad. There weren't cars or airplanes during this time, so these journeys were traveled by foot. Could you imagine walking that distance from the south to the north? These journeys took weeks and sometimes months. Wow. Escaping slavery was against the law, and freedom seekers were treated like criminals. So they had to travel in darkness and off of the main roads. Many times, they carried small children with them. Between 1619 and 1865, thousands of freedom seekers escaped slavery in the South in search of freedom in the North. Because Niagara Falls stood on the border of that freedom, this tourist town became an important destination for many freedom seekers from the South. Niagara Falls is one of only a few borders that allows you to cross into Canada. So to get to freedom, the Niagara River was one more river to cross. Here is the Underground Railroad Heritage Center in the city of Niagara Falls, New York. It highlights the lives of freedom seekers such as Harriet Tubman, John Morrison, Cecilia Reynolds, and many, many others that you may have never heard of before. In fact, Harriet Tubman crossed the suspension bridge only steps from where the center stands. I want to take you on a quick walkthrough so you can see more about its local history. Niagara Falls has always been a tourist town, and people traveled here from all around the world. So as freedom seekers arrived, there were many different people that they came in contact with. Wow, this is a pretty cool exhibit. It's called Legal Geography. It highlights how laws not only shaped the American landscape, but constantly shifted the boundaries of freedom. And with a pen stroke, a person's livelihood was often stripped away. At one point, freedom seekers were simply safe by crossing over into border states where slavery was legally abolished. But because of laws such as the Fugitive Slave Act, Canada became the only safe place for freedom seekers to travel to. This is the Cataract House, one of the most dramatic thresholds of the Underground Railroad here in the North. The Cataract House was one of the two largest hotels in Niagara Falls and served as a magnet for tourists, including Southern slaveholders and their body servants, European royalty, American presidents, and freedom seekers. Some of those freedom seekers became waiters, porters, and cooks at the Cataract House. In fact, as many as 80% of the staff at the Cataract House may have escaped slavery and listed their birthplace as the South. Built in 1825, the Cataract House would have been considered a five-star hotel because of its elegance, decorum, and professional service. Yet behind this elegant facade, the African-American staff secretly operated one of the most highly efficient and effective stops of the Underground Railroad. They led double lives by providing impeccable service in the light, but behind the scene they helped escort hundreds, maybe thousands of freedom seekers across the Niagara River to Canada. The head waiter, John Morrison, led his staff both in the dining room and as secret Underground Railroad conductors on numerous occasions. He even rolled freedom seekers across the river to Canada himself. Freedom seekers could literally see Canada from the porch of the Cataract House. And for 25 cents, they could take a small rowboat from the base of the falls after climbing down about 300 wooden steps. To avoid detection, freedom seekers often did this at night under very poor visibility. Prior to 1848, the only way to cross the Canadian border was by rowboat or steamship. In some rare cases, people even swam the Niagara River to get to freedom. After 1848, 
freedom seekers could cross the new suspension bridge on foot or by carriage. By 1855, the bridge began to carry trains. This gave freedom seekers another way to cross the border, such as Harriet Tubman, who led about 70 freedom seekers to Canada and crossed just feet from where this heritage center stands. Keep in mind that freedom seekers traveled a very long and complicated journey to reach this point and often didn't know who they could trust. While toll collectors at the suspension bridge were bystanders, imagine reaching this critical point in your journey and feeling the uneasiness of not knowing for sure if this person led a double life as a bounty hunter. Even though many people living in this area opposed slavery and signed anti-slavery petitions to Congress, most people did not actively help in the Underground Railroad. In most instances, the details of freedom seekers' journeys are either left to the imagination or passed on as oral traditions in some families. In most cases, these journeys were never spoken about because of the trauma and fear of discovery surrounding these experiences. However, there are some crossings that were well documented in newspapers, letters, and biographies. Two of the most famous are those of Harriet Tubman and my great-great-great-grandfather, Josiah Henson. Josiah Henson was a freedom seeker who escaped to Canada in the 1830s after being enslaved for 41 years. Harriet Beecher Stowe used elements of his life to write the most famous novel of the 19th century, Uncle Tom's Cabin, that Abraham Lincoln once credited with being the spark of the Civil War. Upon settling in Ontario, Henson and 12 associates helped establish a settlement for fugitive freedom seekers. In 1836, he convinced some community members to invest their earnings to buy some land. And two years later, he successfully brokered a deal to purchase 200 acres and found what came to be known as the Dawn Settlement. Henson served as a military officer, leading a black militia in the Canadian Rebellion of 1837, and at the age of 53, he established the British American Institute, a vocational school for all ages that trained teachers, provided a general education, and taught mechanic and domestic arts. Another little fun fact about my great-great-great-grandfather is that he was born on June 15th exactly 208 years from the birth of my youngest daughter, Aziza. There were many barriers that restricted freedom seekers from crossing the border into Canada. In many instances, enslavers broke the law in order to capture free men, women, and children. Consider the story of Patrick Sneed, who was a free man that worked as a waiter at the Cataract House. Sneed was arrested on false murder charges by his former enslaver that was signed by Georgia's governor, the grandfather of Confederate Robert E. Lee. Luckily, Sneed used his saved earnings to hire a lawyer who was able to prove his innocence. So freedom seekers faced many challenges in gaining freedom for themselves and for others. People like Harriet Tubman and Josiah Henson returned to America many times to help other freedom seekers reach Canada. In some instances, freedom seekers never returned to America and helped establish very prosperous communities that served as support systems for freedom seekers once they arrived to Canaan land. Those who came before us have made many sacrifices for us to be where we are today. So in terms of freedom, we must ask ourselves a very important question. Is our individual freedom enough? Or is our freedom intimately linked to the freedom of other people? One of the most powerful experiences of the Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center is its Freedom Gallery, which highlights the lives of freedom seekers of today and connects them to the freedom seekers of the past. Oftentimes, people are under the impression that only the most notable amongst us are those who are empowered to be agents of change. But in reality, it is those unknown people, such as John Morrison and Cecilia Reynolds, who were the real agents of change. The Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center is located at 825 Depot Avenue in Niagara Falls, New York. It's connected to the Amtrak station north of Main Street, which sits on the border by the Whirlpool Bridge. The hours of operation 
are above. Our admission prices are as follows. If you're interested in a tour, please email us at tours at niagarafallsundergroundrailroad.org. I want to thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit about our Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center here in the beautiful city of Niagara Falls, New York. I also want to invite you out to visit, especially bring your children. They'll love it. And guess what? You might even see me there. Peace. Hey, 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 I wasn't the one.